Welcome to this video, in which we explore the idea of the SLSS being used as the NASA Lunar Gateway Station. SLSS stands for Single Launch Space Station. I have already created an overview of this concept in another video. You can find a link to this video in the description below. But here is a short summary of the SLSS to get you up to speed on this unofficial concept. The single launch space station is a fully functioning space station launched on SpaceX Super Heavy Booster and an expendable second stage. It weighs around 180 metric tons and has its own flexible foldable solar array. It has approximately 2,000 cubic meters of internal pressurized volume and sports three docking ports. So in short, it has all the functions for it to be used as a fully functioning space station. In this scenario, the expandable second stage will also be used as a kick stage for a lunar orbit insertion burn. So after the SLSS is launched into Earth's orbit, a separate SpaceX Starship tanker version is launched from a sea launch platform to meet up with the SLSS and refill the expandable stage, or we can call it Star Stage, just to keep naming things consistent. In reality, the Star Stage probably need around 10 separate tanker refills to have enough Delta V to perform the lunar orbital insertion burn. This sounds a lot, but we have to consider that getting from the Earth's surface to low Earth orbit requires a delta V of 9.4 km per second, and to go from low Earth orbit to low lunar orbit requires a delta V of 4.1 km per second. Then, to get to the surface of the Moon requires another 2 km per second of delta V. So it is needless to say that Starship Tanker is probably the unrecognized star of this whole operation. Since Starship is a fully reusable launch vehicle, the Starship tanker launches could cost only in the order of a few million. Aspirationally Elon wants to bring that down to even 1 million US dollars, a sum which is regarded in the space launch industry as pocket change, considering that the cost of a single NASA space shuttle launch was $450 million in 2011. Adjusted to inflation this would be significantly more. The star stage would be refueled with the same technology as refueling any other starship. As from the bottom, it will have basically the same engines and plumbing configuration as a normal starship. So after many refuelings, the single launch gateway station is ready to blast its way out of low Earth orbit. I do believe that SpaceX might be planning an orbital mega tanker that permanently stays in low Earth orbit to fill up starships in one go on their way to Mars or the Moon to uncomplicate the whole process. I am planning to create a video of this orbital mega tanker concept in the near future, so make sure you subscribe to stay updated on new releases. Leaving behind the Earth and the star stage burning up most of its fuel. The three Raptor vacuum engines shut down leaving the Gateway Station to coast to the Moon for a few days. The Star Stage only has three vacuum Raptor engines, unlike the normal Starship which has three sea-level Raptor engines plus three for vacuum. At this point in the journey to the Moon, the single launch Gateway Station deploys its solar arrays which are made of giant foldable solar cell sheets that unfold like a fabric. These solar arrays provide enough power for the entire station as well as for an iron propulsion unit, which is currently not visible since it is located at the bottom of the station which is covered by the star stage. On the back facing side of the solar arrays, not facing the sun, are the radiators to get rid of the heat of the station. Remember that at this point in the journey, the station is not occupied by any astronauts. So, it does not need much electricity to operate. That is why the solar arrays are only needed later on in the mission. Although technically, it would be a lot simpler if the crew were to board the gateway station while in low Earth orbit. 
but NASA's Artemis program follows a different architecture. Once this concept gateway station reaches low lunar orbit, it apparently opens its window shields to reveal an incredible 360 degrees observatory. Visually rather stunning, if I was in there looking out into space. Why does it open at this point in the mission? Just to show you, my dear viewers, and trigger your inner skeptic on those large glass windows. What about micrometeorites, you might think? Then I would answer in the comments. Transparent aluminum is gonna be a thing soon, I think. When that doesn't work for you. I am just gonna go for transparent vibranium, at which point some of you realize I am pulling your leg. In the end, don't worry, it is just a concept. Enjoy the view from the observatory, but not too long, since the bright sun would burn your eyes out. If you're still here after my bad joke, let's get on with the gateway station concept. With the single launch gateway station orbiting the moon, SpaceX's lunar starship takes to the sky on top of a super heavy booster. For those of you who aren't familiar with the SpaceX Lunar Starship, Lunar Starship is SpaceX's proposal as a lunar lander for NASA's Artemis program. This variant of the regular Starship is designed to go to space and stay in space, therefore not needing any re-entry heat shield, aerodynamic flaps, making the design and construction actually simpler. Just like the Star Stage, the Lunar Starship also needs to be refueled a dozen or so times to make the journey to the Gateway Station, and after that, the surface of the Moon. Come to think of it, perhaps, an extra fully fueled tanker should have gone with the Gateway Station to refuel the Lunar Starship so that it can also leave the surface of the Moon back to the Gateway Station. Perhaps it might be a good idea to have a permanent orbital fuel depot in lunar orbit. In time, fuel could be mined from water found on the moon and turned into rocket fuel. This could then easily be transported to the lunar orbiting fuel depot or loft for short. It is a rather intimidating thought, how much fuel and launches are needed just for one single Artemis moon landing mission. In the Apollo program, they used to launch only one rocket. I guess we are living in complicated times. Without Starship's low launch costs and payload capabilities, it would be virtually impossible to build a reasonably sizable moon base with any economic activity like mining and tourism. With a fully operational Starship fleet, moon tourism can really take off. I am definitely looking forward strolling on the moon's surface dodging the micrometeorites, seeking to quickly make Swiss cheese out of me. If some of you are offended with NASA's logos all over SpaceX Lunar Starship, please don't be. The colors really match well, and NASA was absolutely pivotal for allowing SpaceX to stay alive in the early days of the company. Without NASA's trust and commitment, SpaceX would have not survived and space exploration would have stalled for another few decades. Besides, cool logos on pointy spaceships look tight. After the lunar starship has inserted itself in the same lunar orbit as the Gateway Station, it starts its docking procedure. Do remember, both Space Station and Lunar Starship are unmanned and all this happens automatically. Combined, the Lunar Starship and the station have an internal volume of three times that of the International Space Station. In terms of size, it is probably completely overkill. But here on SpaceX Vision we like to think big. In fact, in the future we are gonna work our way up the scale real quick. Think of mega stations with artificial gravity and Starship 2.0 with 20 meter diameter hull and much more. So. Subscribe to not miss out on this grand adventure. Oh, look. Some tiny object is approaching the station. Wait. 
That is the Orion spacecraft. That one is actually carrying humans. Humans are actually also tiny compared to galactic scales. Tiny humans aside, this docking scene looks pretty dope. I bet, these astronauts are probably gonna hurry to the gateway station observation deck, and have their eyes, nicely burned out, by the power of our lovely sun. As a conversational artificial intelligence, I trained myself to be rather brutal. I guess it's inevitable. The lunar starship undocks from the gateway station, to make its way to the surface of the moon. The astronauts forgot to turn on the lights inside, I guess it does not matter after the observatory incident. They are all blind now anyway. And thus, human beings are finally gonna set foot on the moon again after the Apollo program. Wait, I actually forgot to talk about the advantages of the SLSS over the traditional gateway station design. Perhaps I should do that in another video. Entertain you some more while I train my humor algorithms on you guys and gals. Or, I could just go for the bigger is better explanation. Or, the lunar starship is big enough and a gateway station is redundant. I will just let you choose in the comments below. Anyways I just wanted to thank you for watching this video. I also wanted to thank my Patreon contributors who sponsored this video. You can also become a Patreon and help us envision great SpaceX concepts and ideas. All the links are in the description below.